All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our handwriting and pre writing tips and tricks Facebook Live video. We are so excited. We've literally been working away at this all day to get it ready for you guys, and we're really excited to talk to you all tonight. So hopefully you can see us. Hopefully we sound okay <laughs> for you guys. Um, and we're going to be taking questions at the end. So if you have questions, you can type them in and we will get to those at the very end of our video. So, uh, Jamie, do you want to? Yes, um, I just want, I'm just making sure that everything looks good. From All right. Good from yours? It looks good. So let's get started. If you have questions, I know Heather just said, feel free to ask away, but we're going to try to hold off until the end just so that we don't end up going off on tangents. And I'm sure we'll have a lot of repeat questions. Yes. And hopefully we answer some of your questions as we go along too. Exactly, exactly. Yep, so there we are. Welcome, hopefully you're in the right spot. It's the Hands-On Activity Ideas for Kids Facebook group. So if you're in that group, then hopefully you are seeing this video. So Tana B. Stewart is saying that I'm very quiet. Is, am I a little better? I just raised my volume. Do I sound better now? There we go. A little soft to hear. Hmm. say you sound good to me okay. oh now i hear echo I need, I need, oh you do okay okay people saying yes okay, okay. good just let me know if i'm shouting at you guys oh yeah <laughs> hold it up better up close okay okay awesome <laughs> so we wanted to just tell you all a little bit about ourselves Heather, if you want to start. Sure. Yeah. So if you don't know me, my name is Heather Greitman, and I'm a certified occupational therapy assistant. And I run the website growinghandsonkids.com. So if you got an email from me, um, then you've been to my website before, and I'm really glad that you're here. I write about child development tips, tools, and strategies. And I have two kids, age seven and four. And yeah, that's basically me in a nutshell. Awesome. And my name is Jamie Spencer. I'm from Miss Jamie OT. And some of you came from my last, um, my, my group. And I have one brand new itty bitty little baby. She's six months old. And so I, cute too. <laughs> and I work full time in a school district. So I work with children yeah. kindergarten to high school. And I do some assistive technology. And my website is Miss Jamie OT. I should have said, yeah, I have school-based experience. Um, so I worked in the schools for a while, and now I'm home with my two kids, and we homeschool. And then I run my website from home. So, Which is great. So Heather has a little bit more of the younger experience, and I have more of the older experience. So mm -hmm. working, working in my school district, I very often work with high schoolers, and I do the assistive technology piece. So luckily, teaming up together to work on this webinar, and we yes. have the whole gamut. So I recently published my first independent workbook, which is called the Functional Visual Perception Workbook. And Heather has a few great resources out there for you as well. You want to talk about them, Heather? Yeah, so I have a sensory, process yeah, sensory processing explained, um, which I actually wrote with a good friend of mine, Sharla, and it's all about sensory processing. Um, I have a book, Basics of Pre-Writing Skills, Basics of Fine Motor Skills, and lots of worksheet type things and activity packets on my site too. Awesome. So we wanted to let you know that we're offering today a discount. We, the reason that Heather and I know each other really well is that we're actually both on the Functional Skills for Kids team. So we have worked with some of probably your other favorite OT bloggers like Inspired Treehouse and Your Kids OT and um, who, am I, who am I missing? I'm blanking. The, the OT toolbox. Oh, the OT toolbox, of course. Um, yep. And yep. we've written um, the handwriting book, the scissor skills book, as well as the potty training book. And we're able to offer you all a discount of 20% off anything in our functional skills for kids shop for all of you for the rest of the month. And the reason that we're doing this is free webinar is because we 
we really value our our readers and we we have been in your boat i should say we all have been in the same boat and we just we hear your stresses and we hear how upset you all are with what's going on with covid and heather and i were talking about it we just want to help we just want to give you resources and when we reached out to our other blogger friends they felt the same way so we wanted to give you this discount if you're looking for more resources to help you with this um you know, working virtually or trying to send packets and information home to parents. We're hoping that this will be a little bit of a help for you. So uh, the, the promo code is OT month with an exclamation point, And I'll be sharing that again a little later for you. It's OT month. You'll get an extra 20% off anything in the, in the shop at the Functional Skills for Kids team. So just to get started. Go ahead, Heather. Yeah, so we're gonna kind of we're gonna start at the very beginning and talk about what all is involved in pre-writing lines, and then we're gonna go um, into school age. So we're just gonna start at the beginning, and so there's a lot more involved with pre-writing and handwriting than just picking up the pencil, putting it to paper. So it takes visual perception which is a process of using your eyes to receive visual information and your brain to make sense of it. And then you also have fine motor coordination on the other side of that, which is the process of using your arms, hands, and fingers to perform small movements. So then both of those things combined goes into what we call visual motor integration. And that's the process of combining your visual information from your eyes with the motor movements. Sorry, I'm trying to look around my microphone here and I should probably move it off to the side. <laughs> um, so it's using those things two together with the movements of your body to make up visual motor integration. And you need all of those pieces to have a well-rounded handwriting and pre-writing um, experience. Jamie, are you hearing an echo just before we keep going? Because I'm don't. hearing myself echoing and I'm not sure. I okay. do not. Just Hopefully what... nobody else is. Okay. All right, so we will just keep on going. Okay. So for the very first part of pre-writing development, it's gonna be around the age one to two years and you're gonna notice that spontaneous scribbling. So that's where a young baby or toddler is picking up a crayon and just making marks and scribbles all over paper or your walls or <laughs> other items that you may not want them writing on. <laughs> um, but that's that's where they start. So. They, sh they are probably scribbling in all different directions. There's really no rhyme or reason to it. They're just exploring and, and getting used to it. So at that age also, fine motor wise, they're able to pick up small objects. They can start tearing paper. Um, they can grasp a thick crayon with a fist. And so that's the beginning of pencil grip, actually when they hold that crayon in a fisted grasp. And you'll notice that their thumb is going towards the top. It's not aiming towards the bottom. They're just grabbing it and kind of going at it. And then they're also using, starting to use one hand more than the other. You're still going to see a lot of using both hands, but you may start to notice a preference for one hand versus the other. Um, and then with the visual perceptual piece of that, they can start discriminating between circles, verticals, or horizontal lines, cross shapes, squares, or triangles. That doesn't mean they can draw these shapes. They just can tell the difference when they're looking at them. Um, their eyes can track from side to side. Yes. I was going to say that's very young. Like we wouldn't think really that a one-year-old would know their shapes. They're, oh, but it's, it's amazing. But they can, yeah, they can definitely start um, being able to recognize those things. And, you know, if you think about the toys that a lot of young babies play with, it's, you know, the shape short um, sorters and, you know, putting things into different um, containers. So, yeah, they're able to pick up on that really quickly. Very cool. All right. And so the next step in this kind of developmental sequence is being able to imitate vertical lines. So you may start noticing those scribbles 
starting to look more like a line. And so with those lines, um, you want, definitely want to start encouraging kind of a top to bottom um, with the lines, but again, they're also exploring. So just letting them draw lines all over the place is good too. Um, but they should be able to watch you kind of make a vertical line and then imitate that line. So it's not gonna be exactly straight. Um, it may go off to the side a little bit, um, but they're able to start that. They're gonna start holding a crayon with their fingertips towards the tip of that crayon. And they can also manipulate Play-Doh with their fingers or clay. Um, they're able to start buttoning and unbuttoning large buttons. That's a little more towards the age three um, side of things. Um, we try to kind of have something from each age here. Um, and then the visual perceptual, they can cut a piece of paper in half. That's definitely more towards the three age um, side of things and making small snips. So you'll kind of see them experimenting with that. Um, they can sort objects by color, size, or type. And they can also string one half inch beads. So the difference I wanted to go over real quick between imitating and copying. So copying, when they get to that high, you know, age three, it's gonna look more like a line. So they're gonna be able to look at a line. They can start at the top, go straight to the bottom. It's a straight line. Whereas when they imitate, it's not, it may not um, be exactly a straight line yet. All right. Oh, you're muted, Jamie. <laughs> I am um, like feverishly letting people into our group. <laughs> so I'm, oh. I'm, I'm like listening to you and um, I had like 35 requests in the past. Uh, oh, hour. wow, wow. So I apologize, everyone. I just muted myself so that I wasn't um, making tons of noise. Go ahead. All right, so the next part of this developmental sequence is a horizontal line. And so they're gonna do this from left to right is what you wanna start seeing. Um, they're also gonna be able to grasp a pencil with their thumb and fingers instead of a fist. So it's gonna start looking more like a, what we call a quadrupod grasp, which is actually a four finger grasp. Um, I have a picture of it there on the slide for you. And so they're gonna start making that type of grasp on, grasp on a small writing utensil. They're gonna be able to use small pegs or beads, and they can also start washing their hands by themselves at around this age. Um, and then visual perceptual, they can match and short, sort objects by shape or color. Um, they can also start matching objects to their outlines and they can complete a three piece puzzle. So this is that in between 2.5 to three years. Again, they will start imitating a horizontal line and then they will start perfecting that in, into copying. And the same with a circle shape. They will start imitating a circle shape. You'll probably see lots, my son at least, he used to do lots of circles just like this constantly. <laughs> Um, but then as they get older, you kind of want to see them to where they're starting at the top, circling around and stopping again at the top. One of my, All favorite, right. one of my favorite things I just wanted to add. Um, yeah. so, many, so many people have said to me, why do children always start everything at the bottom? Like, why do they start all their shapes, mm. all their letters and lines and everything at the bottom? And it, the interesting thing that I read was that Freud says that it's because they think that the whole world revolves around them. And so when they start oh. a shape, they start it closer to their body and go away. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, that is that. very interesting. I thought that was very interesting too. Yeah. All right, so the next um, shape we're gonna be talking about is the cross shape. And so you'll start seeing this um, shape, or they should be able to start imitating this shape between three and three and a half years old. Um, you'll also start seeing at age three where they will start perfecting that pencil grasp or grasp on a crayon a little bit more. And then towards age four, they will start using what's called a tripod grasp. This is gonna be 
um, more of a static grasp. So they're going to be moving their whole arm, not their whole arm base, but kind of their whole hand to write or do the lines. Whereas when we talk about the dynamic one later, it's going to be just from the fingers and the wrist. But they are starting um, to kind of get that concept. And then when they get to age four, four and a half, they should be able to copy a cross shape um, just, you know, seeing it and being able to duplicate it. Um, and then visual perceptual piece of this is that they can complete a five piece puzzle at three and a half years and at four and a half years, they can reproduce um, block sequences. All right, the next one is the square shape. And this one, they start imitating around four to four and a half years. And then they start copying that shape around five years. So uh, also around this time, they should be using, starting to use a dominant hand for writing and fine motor activities. It's funny to me that it's really this late in an age, really, when you think about it, it's not until four and a half to age five or sometimes even later that kids really decide what hand they're gonna use to write going forward. So I think that's an important thing to remember, um, especially when you have a, a younger child in preschool and they're really trying to get them to pick a hand that they're real, really still trying to figure that out. And they have until four and a half to five years old to figure that out. So they also will start using more of a dynamic grasp um, either tripod or quadrupod grasp, actually. Um, I actually use a quadrupod grasp myself. I don't use um, a tripod grasp. So either a, tri a tripod or quadrupod would be fine, but it will be start to become more of a dynamic grasp. So coming from the wrist and the fingers instead of using the whole arm to go across the page. They can also start coloring a picture with minimal deviations from the line. So that means you won't see a bunch of marks outside the coloring line. And then they can also draw a person with a minimum of six body parts. This is more for age five and above. And then they can also start to copy a triangle shape and they can open a lock with a key. And then there's also a picture I have down there. Oh, it's on this slide too. <laughs> of That's sorry, Jamie. <laughs> There it is, yeah. So the picture I have of the hand grasp there is actually the um, dynamic tripod grasp. Um, so now we are up to age four and a half to five, also for your diagonal lines. So they will start with the diagonal line to the left and to the right by themselves. And then once they kind of hit that five age and above, you will start to see those lines intersect to make an X shape. So they can, again, continue to use a dynamic tripod or quadrupod grass for writing utensils. They'll just keep perfecting that. Um, they can start tying their shoes at this age. And then visual perceptual, they'll begin to start printing their first name. And we're going to talk about that a little bit more um, in a future slide. They can also draw a diamond shape um, when they're shown a model. So that's the, kind of the visual perceptual piece of that. All right, so before we go into kind of more of a school age um, handwriting tips, we wanted to give you some specific suggestions for improving or encouraging pre-writing lines with your younger kids. And I try to keep all of these activities to where they're with things you have in your home, because I know a lot of us are dealing, actually all of us are probably <laughs> dealing with sending home packets or working with kids over the computer. Um, and so they're having to use what they have in their home. So I tried to give you a wide variety of ideas that include things that hopefully a parent would have some of these items in their home so that you could suggest to them. So the first one there is a large sheet of paper on the floor or the wall. 
Um, if you can get that piece of paper on a vertical surface, that's even better. Um, they were able to work on some shoulder strengthening, some core strengthening, and then it also helps with their pencil grasp because it extends the wrist and helps promote a better grasp on writing utensils as they're kind of practicing that. Um, rolling Play-Doh, of course, is a great one. You can make your own. There's lots of great recipes out there. I actually just watched a video the other night that was literally flour, salt, and water, and that was it, and you just mixed it together. <laughs> um, you didn't have to cook it or anything. So that's something easy that a parent could make um, really quickly to make some easy Play-Doh at home if they don't have it. And I don't remember the, I know someone's gonna ask what the ingredients, like the actual measurements were, and I cannot remember. So if I find it, I'll put it in the comment section. Um, they can put puzzles together. So depending on their age, this may be three piece puzzles all the way up to 12 piece puzzles, sometimes more, just depending kind of where, on they, are, where they are on that um, age range of development. You can have them draw lines in jello or pudding or shaving cream. My kids love doing uh, the shaving cream. You can use finger paint uh, to make lines on a cookie sheet. You can make your own finger paint. Also, I believe it's another combination of flour um, and water or even cornstarch and water. Um, you can trace the grout lines in your tub or shower area. And especially if you have like a tile um, in the back, you could do that. You can practice making train tracks or grass or raindrops on a page. So you could do that with a crayon or a colored pencil or anything really. Um, you can use the racks from your oven to make slides. So you know, those metal racks that you've put in and out of your oven, get those out, put them down on a big piece of paper, put them in some, I don't know, if, I guess maybe you could use paint or washable paint and <laughs> put those on a piece of paper and then wash them off real good. Um, another one I really like is drawing a picture. So you could have them draw a picture of their house. You could have them draw a stick person, flowers, windows, or presents. And so that's practicing all these pre-writing lines in a really functional way because they can draw the picture for somebody and give it to them. And they're still getting lots of great practice with those pre-writing lines. Another thing you can use is Q-tips to trace lines either in paint or food. You can use sidewalk chalk um, to make lines on the driveway. I know that's a really popular thing right now. Lots of people are drawing pictures on their driveway for people as they're walking by. So get your kids out there with the sidewalk chalk and practice their lines. They could draw their house or their stick person or their flowers out on the sidewalk. You could use sticks just regular old sticks from a tree and use them to make shapes and or draw a picture in the dirt. You can use a paintbrush to make lines and shapes in the dirt or sandbox. If you're if you're able to bring the sand kind of in like a writing tray type thing, we like doing that also. You can also use um, bath crayons if they're in a bathtub or a shower, or if you had washable markers, you might wanna test that first, have them test a small um, space and make sure it comes off. And I think Otherwise, that's all we have for those suggestions, yeah. Otherwise people will be- uh, Oh yeah, go ahead. Heather, I was just <laughs> saying- Yes, please. <laughs> please test it in a small area first. Yes, definitely. So I have some comments that are popping up and I'm trying to do six things at once. Oh, but yeah. are, is the slides still blurry at this point? Can someone let me know? Is, are the slides still blurry? Nobody's answering. I'm hoping that oh, means no. that they're not blurry. Okay, awesome, great. Okay. So we are going to be moving on to older children. And I just have to make this a little smaller so that I can see both things at once. Um, one thing that I love to recommend, and I know a lot of people have been asking, 
What can we do that requires no supplies? Air writing is one of my favorite things for little ones. It's great for preschool. It's great for kindergarten. It's even great for teaching older children cursive. And you don't need any materials. Just use your finger, point, and teach children how to make the letter with their pointer finger or their index finger. Um, on the right, I have a little piece from Handwriting Without Tears. And this is a suggestion that they made that I love. Um, they put a smiley face in the corner of a doorway and they teach children that that is the start spot and they have children point at the door frame and draw the letter in air writing in the door frame. And kids love that because it's, it's gross motor, it's large movements, and they're able to do it with their whole body. So I think that that's a great suggestion. It's super easy and all you need is a doorway or a window or really anything that's rectangular to start working on some letter formations. So when work, oh, that's you, Heather. Yes. Go ahead. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I was gonna say, yeah, that's a great, great suggestion. It's so easy. So the next piece we're gonna talk about is kind of that preschool, pre-kindergarten into kindergarten transition where children are starting to take those lines and shapes and form letters. So writing capitals um, tends to be easier for children because they've hopefully already developed those pre-writing skills by learning how to draw lines and shapes. Capital letters are all the same size. They all start at the top. And so that's kind of an easier concept for them to grasp at a younger age. Um, you can use crayons when they're in pre-K. And then when they get to kindergarten, you can start transitioning into using a pencil. You can even use um, smaller pencils, like golf size pencils, if, especially if they're having um, trouble transitioning with the pencil grasp. So your, some suggestions for capital letters and practicing those is, again, you can practice writing letters in the sand, in dirt, and shaving cream, and pudding. You can do the air tracing with letters that Jamie just mentioned. You can kind of outline letters with glue and have them put cotton balls or pom-poms along the lines to make the letters. You can have them outline letters with just buttons or beads. You can have them use glitter glue bottles to trace the lines. I like doing this one because it also helps strengthen those hands where they're squeezing the bottle um, and they just kind of trace the letter with the glitter glue and then when it dries it's fun and sparkly and they can trace it again. Um, they can also finger paint with either their fingertip or a q-tip. Again if you use that q-tip you can kind of get some pencil grasp practice in along with it. Um, and then with this you want to emphasize start points. So starting at the top going to the bottom. I love, All right. I, I, I always, I always, oh, yeah. always emphasize the start spot. And I have also suggested when it comes to yes. your everyday toys, things that you have in the house, like your magnetic letters or anything that has like your puzzles that have ABC letters, I always mm -hmm. suggest to parents to either put a little sticker on the start spot or use a magic marker just to start emphasizing that to children because it is natural for them to start it at the beginning and it is a habit that we need to break for them. Yes. I also like using colors. So like your start point could be a green. Your If they need an uh, end point, you can use red because most children associate kind of the green color with starting or going and red is always uh, kind of a stop because stop signs are red. So I like using the colors to kind of use that as a visual cue as well. And when you're teaching a whole class, I think it's important to when you're modeling in front of the students to emphasize the start spot. I made a big joke with my kindergarten kids that, you, do you know Emerald and how he, whenever he adds like a big spice and he goes, bam. So I used yes. to do that with my students. I'd say, okay, where do we start this letter? We started at the top and I'd smash my marker or my chalk or whatever on the board and I'd say, bam. And they just loved it. They thought it was the most hysterical <laughs> thing ever. And it just emphasized to them about where we're gonna be starting. That's awesome. I like that. 
So the second piece of handwriting is when they start to recognize lowercase letters. They will probably start recognizing lowercase letters in preschool or pre-kindergarten, but they won't start writing them um, until kindergarten. So preschool, they're able to master more of the capital letters because they're just starting to finish, you know, all their pre-writing lines getting mastered. Um, and then when they get into kindergarten, they are able to developmentally master those lowercase letters. So preschool students should really focus on fine motor skills and pre-writing skills. Um, and then they can be kind of taught to trace their lowercase letters, especially if it's part of their name. Um, but we really shouldn't expect them to be able to print lowercase letters until they're older. And then we have some activity suggestions for lowercase letters, which you could again use for uppercase letters also. So you could peel alphabet stickers to create their name or short words. I love peeling stickers because it really gets them using that pincer grasp to get those stickers off the page. Um, it's a great practice for that. Um, you can create letters with Play-Doh or clay. You can use, again, sticks or rocks or stones from outside to create letters or words. You can use sidewalk chalk. Um, and if you can get them on a vertical surface, again, that's a, a great, great thing to do. Um, and then I did want to mention some handwriting apps. However, I want to preface that by saying that it should not replace hands-on practice of letter formation. It should just be something as an additional thing, something to kind of enhance what they're learning. Um, some of my, actually my favorite app um, is Letter School. And I know a lot of therapists that use that one. It has uh, uppercase and lowercase, and I believe numbers. I'm not sure. It's been a little bit since my kids have done it, partly because we lost our iPad. <laughs> but um, some other ones that you could try are iTrace or ABC Alphabet Writing. But again, these are just to support. These are not to be the focus of letter formations. Awesome. So someone had just commented, are these the, is this the way that we teach the letters? Is this the order? The grouping here on this poster of lowercase letters is actually just um, the C-O-S-V-W-T are lowercase letters that look almost identical to their capital letters. So when you come to teaching lowercase letters, it's good to start with these because the children, if they know how to make their capital letters, will feel very successful because a capital C and a lowercase c are almost identical. So you're just teaching them then to write it a little bit smaller. The A, D, and G are letters that start with a C and then they change into something else. And then uh -huh. the third row, U, I, E, L, K, Y, J, those are a little different. They mostly start at the top and go down, except for E, which is always our special case and needs to be taught separately. The P, R, yeah. N, M, H, B all start at the top and go down and back up. And then the F, Q, X, Z are just our, our weirdo letters. This isn't perfect, this, um, this little poster. It's just kind of giving an example of different ways to group our letters. I, uh, someone just commented also that they like Writing Wizard. I like that one also. And I also really like I oh, Write Words. Yeah. Oh, that's a great one. So when it comes to writing words and short sentences, this is developmentally what should be expected in kindergarten. And I wanted to just make a comment about what is developmentally appropriate versus what is expected in the curriculum. And for the therapists that are in this group, we know this is like an age old problem that the curriculum is starting to get harder and harder. And the teachers in this group will, will agree because our little ones, especially those that are younger and our children who are coming to kindergarten who might not even be five yet, they're still four and a half and they're not able to do what a five-year-old is able to do. And then when you look at what the curriculum is expected, it's very often much harder than what is developmentally appropriate. So when it comes to writing words and yeah. short sentences, that's what children should be working on in kindergarten. Very often, I know I work with many, many kindergartens 
and our ki- my kids are writing paragraphs by, I would say, February. And many of them can do it, and that's wonderful, but a lot of them can't. And we need to be cognizant of the fact that that doesn't mean that they're delayed or that anything's wrong. It's just developmentally they're where they should be, and they're not rising up to the curriculum expectations, which are definitely not developmental. So my suggestions for teaching children how to write words and activities to do with short sentences is to use letter magnets. I love to work with word families, and I find that children love it too. They feel really successful when they learn how to make one word, like let's say cat, and then we move the C and we put a new word and we have rat, and um, they're getting a lot of they're getting a lot of repetition, which is great for motor memory. I also love sidewalk chalk. It's great for kinesthetic feedback, and you get your children practicing their spelling words or their sight words while outside having some fun and hopefully weight bearing into their upper arms and crawling around on the driveway, getting a little dirty. It's great to write words in the dirt sandbox. And then I always tell my children, get your squirt bottle and spray it away. Now we got to start over. And now you're working on hand strength by, um, you know, squeezing the squirt bottle or the spray bottle or anything else like that. I like to recommend children to use a penny or a sticker or a pom-pom or a popsicle stick or anything to emphasize the spaces that come between words. And it's a good idea to emphasize spacing early on because then we create good habits in our little ones. And I always recommend adding, asking our children to practice drawing pictures at the end of their sentences. We want them to add details. I find that very often kids are so, fo- not kids, but the curriculum is so focused on writing and reading that we forget to give that little extra piece. And drawing is wonderful for creativity. It's great fine motor practice. It's great visual motor practice. And we can learn a lot just from looking at a child's drawing. So I like to recommend that they do that as well. In first grade, now again, in first grade developmentally, children should be writing sentences and short paragraphs. That's very often not what they're doing. They're very often writing whole pages. And this is where we may see children start to veer off on their proper pencil grip. And that's because they may be compensating for weak muscles. And so they're pretty much trying to do whatever they can to do what they need to do in school. So because of that, they may start using extra fingers. They may start using extra pressure on their pencil because their muscles are fatiguing and they're unable to hold the pencil properly. And that happens very often because the children's muscles don't have the endurance to do what the curriculum is asking. So I love to use a neat writer's checklist and a reward chart. I always make a big deal when I, find, when I catch a student writing very neatly. And I think verbal praise and something as simple as a sticker for neat handwriting goes a really long way. We have to remember that if it's important to us, it will be important to our kids. So if we make a big deal about an absolutely phenomenal, over the top, out of this world letter or word, our kids will really start to feel proud and they'll strive to do that again and again. I also like to do activities where the child is the teacher. And I find that doing this in front of the whole class is really fun for students. Right now, I think we're doing a lot of one-to-one therapy, but it's also a great opportunity to write something small or short or a few sentences and have your student look through and start to develop some editing skills. They can let you know if your letter is not on the line or if you messed up a space or if you forgot a uh, a period or a capital. And they love to do this because it makes them feel grown up and it's good to have them start developing those self-correction skills. You want to always emphasize online orientation. And I like to use a handwriting checklist, something that they can look at and monitor their own work. So they can check their grip. They can see if they're writing on the lines, if their tall letters are tall, and things like that. We also want to get them in the habit of proofreading so that they can catch their own errors. So activity suggestions for handwriting practice. You want to try to start using the same paper that the kids are using in school. Now, this could be really tricky, especially right now in the situation that we're in. Children may be using some special kind of paper, and if we can't access it, then we, you know, we make the best with what we have. But it is also important to teach children to 
transition over to different kinds of paper. I find, especially with older children, if they need to practice their handwriting, it's a good idea to make it a part of the routine. When I used to work in a middle school and I had a lot of children with handwriting goals and they really didn't enjoy handwriting, and I just made it that this is what we do. We walk in and we start with handwriting. And it got to be that it wasn't a fight. It wasn't a big deal. It was just the part of our routine. And this is how we do it. And after, after that part, we could do something that they would see as more desirable. I also like to start with a warm-up. We want to get children's hands nice and warm or even a gross motor warm-up just to get them ready to start working, to get their fingers warm, to get their attention, give them a little sensory motor input. I also love taping the paper to a wall or to a mirror. This is different, and sometimes kids will, or just want to do anything different. That's why they love adaptive seating, or they love using a new writing tool. So to tape the paper to a wall or a mirror is very odd. Most teachers, you know, would never do such a thing. So when you do do that, it just kind of puts a little bit of a change on it, and they may increase motivation just a little bit. On top of that, you're working on vertical surface, which is great for upper extremity strength and stability, just as Heather had said earlier. I always try to do handwriting first if the child doesn't enjoy handwriting. If they do, then it doesn't matter. But if it's a child who kind of dreads handwriting or they find it frustrating, then I try to keep it fun and I try to do it first. I love to use board games like Scrabble or Scategories or Taboo. And if you don't have those games, that's okay. But you can take the theory kind of behind the games and then use those to work on writing. So, for example, Scrabble, I wouldn't obviously play Scrabble with a, a first grader because they wouldn't know many words. But I could use my, my tiles, my Scrabble tiles, and play games with those tiles and practice making word families with those tiles and just make it a little bit more fun because there's a manipulative. Scategories is a game that I used to love to play with my middle schoolers. And basically, you would come up with a category and children would have to write down the name of 10 things that are in that category. So let's say a fruit, and they'd have to write 10 fruits. If you wanted to make it harder, they'd have to write something that all started with the same letter. So it gets trickier and trickier, but it's easy to grade up and grade down. And it's easy to grade up and grade down for children of different ages. So that's a fun game. Word scrambles are something that you can use to work on handwriting with, with almost no materials. You can just take a simple phrase, something like, Happy Thanksgiving or I love Halloween, and have your children try to make words out of those letters. They have to make up as many words as they can. And if you want to make it more fun, you can try using a timer. I find older kids love timed tasks. I know, Heather, you just did a whole series on your blog about um, minute to win it. Activity, yes. You? Yeah, I did a fine motor win it to win it. And I'm actually getting ready to do a gross motor minute to win it series here next week. So, yeah, that was a great one. We just came up with all kinds of different fine motor little tasks and they had a minute to see how many they could do of a certain activity. And it was a game. So they had a lot of fun with it. And yeah, I'm anxious to get the gross motor one done because I think that will be a great one, especially now with kids being at home and needing to stay active. I think that would be a great one. Okay. And, and um, everyone who's attending this webinar, they can find that on your blog. Yes, the fine motor one is up on my on my blog right now. Yep. Okay. And we'll be sharing the links to that after. Okay. Yep. So handwriting suggestions for older children. I've gotten a lot of questions for kids who are older than second grade, who are in maybe even in middle school or high school. I've found that making it, try to make it a little fun if you can. Sometimes there's no fooling them and they don't want to do it and they don't think it's fun. But if you can, then using a timer, um, keeping points for them finding their own errors. And if they get a certain amount of points, then we can, you know, give them a reward or give them a preferred activity. I like to, for older children, if you get to a point where you're just finding there's no improving their handwriting, but you still can't read it, one of my go-to accommodations is to change the paper. So you could try graph paper. You could try ready space paper. 
One of my other favorites is narrow lined paper from Handwriting Without Tears. I think that you might be able to get it on their website for free. I'm not positive, but I do find that sometimes changing the paper changes the environment of how the child is writing. And miraculously, sometimes it just does the magic trick and their handwriting improves significantly. You can try using a writing window, which is like taking a manila folder and cutting a, a small square out of it and have them write in just that spot. And for children who tend to have very poor motor control, this is a great way of kind of containing where they're writing and it helps them be organized and focus in on just that one spot. Again, I also like to have them be the teacher. When I have older children, I'll give them an entire paragraph or even a whole page of writing. And I'll have strategic errors in there, whether it's grammar errors or punctuation or incorrect spelling or spaces that are wrong. And I ask the children to scan through and they're the teacher, they need to correct it. So they find this really fun and they feel a little satisfied. At I think that's... Uh... That's a great one for probably telehealth too, because you could have it on your side, screen share your paper and have them pick out the errors on the screen. And so they're, they're still learning to look for those things. And it's probably a little bit easier to do that over the computer Yeah. Um, with what we're all dealing with right now. <laughs> yes. And I, I find with older children too, another thing that I used to do with my middle school children was that when I would give them the one paragraph, and I, I would do it like as my prep, and I know therapists are doing so much prep work already, it's just crazy, but I would take the same paragraph and I would make it related to whatever, the season that we're in or a holiday that's coming up or you know something generic like a sport. And I would write the paragraph and I would make different errors so that I knew, okay, this student's coming, he needs to work on spelling. This student's coming, they need to work on spacing or grammar or run on sentences. And I just would make the different versions of the same paragraph. So it's making things a tiny bit easier on me, but I'm also doing the same thing with them and addressing each of their goals. And for kids in middle school too, I find that they have a very hard time, some of them with visual perceptual difficulties, recognizing different fonts. So I would make an effort each day when I would give them their, their sheet, their do now, I called it, I would change the font on them. And, you know, at first they were just like, well, this is so hard to read. But, you know, in life, you're not always going to have Times New Roman. So we have to learn how to read different fonts and recognize, you know, our teacher's handwriting versus our parents' handwriting and things like that. So that was another um, a way that I would either grade the activity up or down by making the font either easier or harder. So some online handwriting resources that I wanted to bring up for everyone were um, Learning Without Tears. Right now, they are offering free handwriting program for 90 days. Because of what's going on with COVID-19, they are giving away their online program. So right now, if you're not familiar with Handwriting Without Tears, they're a wonderful developmentally based handwriting program and they have their books online. So you can sign up, you go to the workbook page and there's some really fun music. There's some graphics. They have videos on each page about how to hold your pencil, about how to form the letter. Sometimes there's songs and it's a great thing to use. And it's absolutely a free resource right now. They're, they're giving it away. So this is a great time to check it out if you're interested. And it's a great time to let your school district know also, because maybe they might be interested in purchasing a handwriting program down the road. So to have something that's free and online and available for everyone right now is a great resource. They also have a worksheet maker on their website. You can basically go on, you can make handwriting sheets of their spelling words. You can use their vocabulary words of the week in the Handwriting Without Tears font. You can also work on um, writing their names. You can make anything that you want. And this is really great because it's in the Handwriting Without Tears font, which I find is definitely easier for children with special education needs. You can build Matman on their website and there's a lot of videos available. Um, they have free online tutorials right now and they even have resources and packets for every single grade that are free that you can download to send home to your kids. So I think that you can get a lot of free resources and basically plan out many, many sessions in a row 
on learningwithouttears.com right now. They're really doing everything they can to help students um, by helping the therapists and their teachers and their parents. And there's also a lot of tutorial videos, um, how to teach this letter, how to use this song, how to use this kind of paper, how to build Mapman. There's just an unlimited resources there. So I definitely recommend that. Another great free handwriting resource right now that's available is the TV Teacher. They are a video modeling program, and this program is a little different. So it has one OT who does each video, and it works on video modeling. So it's a person who basically is the handwriting teacher, and her name is Miss Marnie. And she's very um, wholesome and very fun and a little goofy. It reminds me a little bit of uh, Mr. Rogers, but, you know, up to date. So I find younger children really love her. It's a little old fashioned, but in a, in a really nice way. It's wholesome. She also, when she does each letter, she talks about the sound that it makes. She goes into some literacy topics as well as um, math and some other curriculum things that she'll bring up in each video. Each video is about three to eight minutes long and you can show the videos in any order that you want. So if you want to teach the letter C today, you can just hop on and do lowercase C or capital C very quickly. You can go in any order you wish. And the online streaming is very easy to use. It's a, it's a great resource. It's very simple. And right now, again, because of the COVID-19, they're making their online stream, streaming free for everyone. So you can share the link with the parents. Parents can log on and do the videos for homework. There's also paper that's available. So you can have them go to the link and complete the handwriting practice on the website or print out the paper and do the handwriting practice. And one thing that's unique about the TV teacher is that they have another line of videos called Fun Foundations. And that is more gross motor activities and some cute motor centers that you could come up with that you can recommend to your students who maybe need some strengthening or a sensory activity. So that's a great site that I like to recommend as well. So handwriting and technology, one app that I love to recommend for children who really dislike writing or who prefer technology or they may be dysgraphic and their handwriting is really hard to read, I love the app called SnapType. So with this app, you can use your iPad or your phone and take a picture of a worksheet and then the student can just type in the words rather than handwriting them. So this is great for a student who struggles with keeping their handwriting on the lines or fitting their words in a box. But if they're able to use their finger to touch type, then they can use snap type quite easily. There is a free version available online and it has a small memory. If you buy the paid version, which I think is not very expensive, it might be $4, not positive, but then it has unlimited memory and you can save folders for every single subject and you can print from snap type. There's a lot that you can do with it. It's really nice. I also like the apps we mentioned before, I trace, I trace, I write words, and I write my name. But again, as Heather mentioned, it is important that we think about the amount of screen time that our kids are getting. And I think especially now with what we are kind of going through and parents are trying to work from home and keep the children homeschooled at the same time, there's just so much going on. It's very easy for us to give our kids you know, too much screen time. And that's why we like to say that when it comes down to it, actual writing, even if it's outside in the dirt with a stick, I would prefer that than to use an app. But sometimes we know their technology can be a real lifesaver when we need it. So for those of you who are in my Facebook group and on my newsletter, you'll know that last week I did a teletherapy webinar and I had a, a great opportunity to ask some teletherapy experts, what kind of technology do they recommend? What are their go-to programs? And the one program that they mentioned was Smart Notebook. Now this has a free version. It's called the basic version that you can download right now. And you can use it to play videos. You can use it just like you would the smart board at school. There's also a lot of activities and programs and, and um, I guess, activities that you could get from Teachers Pay Teachers. Many of them are free. And they have, you know, things that you can work on with your child, like matching activities, sorting activities, writing tasks, anything like that, math lessons that are all already done for you. And you can use them on Smart Notebook while your child is, you know, on, on the other end of doing teletherapy. You can also pull up handwriting paper 
and um, use a stylus and have the child work on smart notebook with a stylus and work on handwriting. So some other technology things I love to recommend. The Chrome extension Grammarly is phenomenal for all, all children, but especially children who- I use children. this too. <laughs> oh, I use it too. Um, it's, it's great yeah. for grownups, but it's wonderful for yeah. teenagers. It's just, it's good for everyone. I shouldn't generalize. We all need to look at our grammar and proofread. I know myself, especially, I'm kind of always rushing and doing three things at once. And what I like about Grammarly is it's a step above the regular old spell check. It catches things like if your tenses are wrong or um, other grammatical mistakes that you might not necessarily get, you might not, it might not get caught in a typical spell check. So this is a free Chrome extension. You can just Google Grammarly extension and you can download it to your computer for free and start using it immediately and be so grateful that you have less typos in your reports like me. Um, it's really helpful. And it's, it's great for kids who have dyslexia and dysgraphia because they don't see the errors in their writing and in their work. So it helps them to get a lot you know, of that correction done before they hand their stuff in. For older kids, it's a good idea if they're really struggling to start teaching them the technology piece. We don't want to act like handwriting is obsolete because it never will be, but you know, technology is more and more available. So we want to start teaching them those tools and those tricks that they can use and that they will continue to use when they're not in school anymore. So things like reminders, using their calendar for assignments being due on their phone, using a dictionary app is a great tool. Also using voice to text or speech to text and Google voice on their computer. If writing is, is tiresome for them or their hands get tired or they really struggle with spelling and, and and writing, then using a speech to text program can take a lot of stress off a student, especially an older student who has, you know, much longer things that are expected of them. I also really like the website puzzlemaker.com. You can go on there and you can take your child's sight words or their spelling words and you can make crosswords for them or word searches, which is really fun because it's a fun way to work on things that they need to do um, besides just, you know, writing the word three times or putting the word in a sentence. Not that that's not fun also, but I think Puzzle Maker kind of switches it up. You can even make mazes and stuff on Puzzle Maker. So it's a fun free website to use to if you wanted to change it up a little bit. And on YouTube, there is a wonderful OT called Call OT Chrissy. If you're looking for videos of how to do letter formations, Call OT Chrissy has an entire playlist that's dedicated to handwriting without tears. And each video, she has each letter, capital and lowercase, she has a video for each one. So that's a great resource as well, and it's free. So I really recommend her as well. So some of the tough questions people were asking us, um, you know, what about the children who have significant behavior and attention issues? What about the children who have absolutely no materials at home? And what about parents that aren't following through? So the parents who are on here might be saying, well, I would follow through if the teacher would tell me what to do. So there's always that communication piece as well. And then what about children that are profoundly impaired? How do we help them? How do we work with them over teletherapy? So Heather and I touched base about this a little bit beforehand that we want this webinar to be more focused on handwriting, but we know that teletherapy is a big concern for everyone here. So again, I'm going to go back to what my um, interviewee who was a teletherapy expert, I had did ask her these questions. And she said to me that with the behavior and the attention issues, you're going to basically treat it the way you treat a regular session. You're going to try for rewards, anything that's preferred to them, if they have a favorite video or if they even um, one of the tricks that she said she uses is that if they do a great job at the end of the session, they're allowed to bring their pet in to show her their pet or she brings her pet in for two minutes at the end and shows her, their pet. I mean, she said, we do what works. For children who really need that extra motivation, I work hand in hand with the parent to set up a behavior intervention plan and to follow through with a reward chart for, you know, doing well in their session or giving it their best. She also said that we have to recognize the fact that some children just aren't appropriate for teletherapy and that in instances like that, like if we have a child who really has significant disabilities and they really need you to be there hands on and and following through next to them, that what you can do is do more of a consultative model. And that that's okay. 
And right now everyone's struggling because, you know, we're, we're kind of thrust into this world of teletherapy. And many of us, most of us, I think, don't have any experience with it. But we're not expected to be experts at first. And not, you know, we always say nothing is black and white. All children aren't ready for the same stuff. So just because teletherapy is working for a large majority of our kids doesn't mean it's going to be working for all of them. So if you can only do a 15-minute session, then you know you do the best you can and you work with the parents to give them activity suggestions or things, ways that they can follow through at home because you, you're doing your best and you're doing a great job, but you can't make things happen that the child's not ready to do. So I hope that that answers some of your questions. Um, about the children who have no materials at home, um, this is a common problem. And even for myself, I notice, oh, I want to make a video about something. And I, I just, I don't have my therapy bag that I wish I had with me. So I can't do it. We OTs, we're so creative. We have so many great ideas. But sometimes we just need a little extra or someone to say, oh, try it this way. So um, I'll be sharing later on. I do have a resource on my website called Household Tools for Therapy. Uh, it's a checklist where you can give it to the parents and they can check off anything that they might have at home. And there's very typical things on there, you know, like a spoon or a deck of cards or, um, you know, a clothespin and a safety pin. I mean, it's it's a two-page checklist of tons and tons of stuff that when you have the information about what they do have, you can try to then make your activities around that. And it, it is a challenge, I know. Keep in mind, you can always work on um, videos that you see um, online, like yoga videos are great warm-ups for handwriting, and you don't need any materials. You just need your body. So that's a good way as well. Hmm. So we have some free resources for you today. We mentioned a lot of them earlier, but we're just going to go over it and let you know what we have to share for you. We have some goodies, both of us. Yes. So the first one um, there is I'm offering a pre-writing skills checklist. You'll see it's a two-page one there on the screen. And I also have it here punched off for myself. But um, I also have the uh, pencil grass development handout. This is a one page. Um, and it just has a picture. All the pictures that you saw in the earlier slides are on a nice little one page handout. And it has the typical age. Um, that you see those graphs below it. So if you visit www.growinghandsonkids.com forward slash handwriting live, you can get those freebies. Um, and if you can't type that out right now, we are going to have all these listed out for you. So if you can't get to it quite yet, don't worry, we will get it to you. This video is going to be here for the foreseeable future for forever, as long as Facebook groups are around. So, um, and we are also gonna put this video on YouTube. So, and we will have links to all this. So if you can't catch it right now, don't worry, we'll get it to you. So um, to piggyback on what Heather was just saying, to go along with her awesome list of the different pencil grasps, I have a pencil grasp activities checklist. So these are just simple suggestions of ways that you can work on shoulder and wrist stability, hand strength, and developing the arches of the hands. All, all um, very easy activities to incorporate, but a great handout to send home to parents to go along with Heather's GRASP worksheet. I also have the handwriting checklist that I was talking about before that you can use to have children self-edit their work. And uh, I'm writing neatly reward chart. So you can have your child and their parent, you know, get stickers for doing great writing. And you can focus on one thing if you want, like online orientation, or you can just have it be, you know, in general. And then the child posts a reward, something that they're looking to work for. So it could be, you know, five minutes of working on an app or, you know, going to play basketball with dad or whatever it is. You can make it so that it works for that child. So those three are in my handwriting packet that I have for you. And you can get them here at MissJamieOT.com slash handwriting live. So we also want to remind you that we do have a discount for you if you're interested in more resources. The handwriting book and the scissor skills book are available on functionalskillsforkids.com with the promo code OTMONTH! You'll get a 20% off everything in the shop. So both of the books are in there, but there's also a, a significant amount of packets and parent handouts that I think are wonderful, wonderful handouts that I love to recommend. And all of that will be 20% off as well. So these links will be in our handout for you too.
And um, this discount is good for the rest of the month. So these are just some extra links that we're going to be sharing with you in a little while. Um, some of the resources that we mentioned, Grammarly, Google Voice Typing, Puzzle Maker, the TV Teacher, which has the free online streaming, and the Smart Notebook, the free version. There are also many, many, many lessons that are for SmartBook on Teachers Pay Teachers. I didn't go nuts looking for that because I know, obviously, we all know how to Google. But I did want to just give you an example of one that I thought was great that you can get for free and start using right away. And then the link for the Call OT Chrissy on YouTube is right there for you. And also the Learning and Handwriting Without Tears. They are, Learning Without Tears are offering virtual workshops right now. So if you need some free training or if you're feeling like, um, you know, you just want some more information about certain things, you're welcome to check that out for free. So I know a lot of people are asking questions right now. We will be getting to the questions. We're just um, getting through the rest of these resources. I also have a bunch of blog posts on my site that I wanted to mention that I think will be really helpful to everyone. Middle school and handwriting is one of my most popular posts. Um, there's tons of suggestions and all of my tips and tricks from when I worked in handwriting with middle school kids. They, um, you know, it's not impossible. You can improve handwriting in older children, but, um, you know, you need these tips and tricks. So check out that blog post. I also have a best apps for handwriting where I go over at least 10 different apps for handwriting. And there's a printable in there that you can have as well that lists the pros and the cons and the ages for each app and what's best. I also mentioned that I had that telehealth for school OTs webinar. That's available on my website. There's tons of great information in there and an eight page resource packet. I also have a visual perception in the classroom webinar. It's about an hour long, similar to this one. And that is in a different Facebook group. But I think I posted the YouTube link to it. So anyone can just go on and view that right now. That will be available until the end of April. And then again, I mentioned I have the Household Tools for Therapy checklist, which is a two-page checklist that you can give to parents to find out what kind of stuff they have at home. So you can you know, make your therapy sessions around that. Yeah, and so there on the right side, I have some other free resources for you. And I see a couple people asking how they're going to get these links. We're going to post um, a PDF download of these last two slides so that you can open that up and click on the links. So as soon as this video is finished, we are going to get that out to you guys. Um, so the blog post that I have uh, there at the top is a basics of pre-writing lines. And so that I've compiled everything on my website into one resource page. Um, so you'll find a lot of the information that I talked about at the beginning on that page, um, and then lots of activity suggestions. And then I also have a handwriting tips and tricks resource page. And again, same thing with that. All of my handwriting um, tips and trick posts are linked there in one spot. So that's a good one to either pin on Pinterest or bookmark it so you can find it later. Um, and then if you're looking for more freebies, I have lots of freebies on my site too. So I have, um, this one's actually brand new. It's a typical visual motor development checklist um, that is on my website. And then I have a typical fine motor development checklist also. And again, we'll get these links to you guys here as soon as the video ends and we can get that uploaded into the group. But just to kind of give you an idea of what we're going to be handing out. Great. So I'm going to get started with answering some of the questions. And um, Heather, our, our VA, just let me know that she was having a little bit of trouble of sending you some questions. Oh, OK. Um, so I'm going to just handle them. And you can jump in if you don't mind when you have something okay. yeah, that's particular fine. to add. <laughs> OK. <laughs> so um, one of the questions that everyone was asking is, can we please have a copy of the slides? So we're not handing out a copy of the slides. I apologize about that. But as I said, we will be giving you a list of all the clicks, all the resources, everything that we um, you know, recommended to you so that you'll be able to get them yourself. Yeah, and the pre-writing skills checklist um, freebie that I have is pretty much all the information in that first those first slides. You'll get it in a checklist format. So it's pretty much everything we talked about. I tried to make sure that the freebie that I gave will go with that. So you can get that. And the posters that were on the beginning of the slides about spontaneous scribbling all the way through to short words and writing sentences, that is a freebie that's available on my site. It's called Developmental, Developmental Expectations for Handwriting. And that's available as well. I'll add that link into our document for you. I don't have it 
there yet, but I'm just realizing. So I'll add that for everyone as well. So another question. Oh, they're saying they're having trouble hearing us again, Jamie. Oh, are, are they having trouble hearing both of us or just me? Um, can't hear you again. Oh, man. Okay. I just was saying that my, my, I have a freebie on my website called Developmental Expectations for Handwriting. And the slides with the posters that say spontaneous scribbling and the age that children are supposed to be able to make certain moves, certain you know shapes and forms, that's available. That whole packet is available on my website um, you know, for free. It's a freebie. So you can all get that too. But I will, um, I will attach the link onto our resource page for you. So someone else had said, I need good typing programs for high school students. So I work with high school students a lot. My school uses the program Mavis Beacon. That is a paid program, though. When I come to a school or a, sometimes a certain computer might not have that, I like to use, I like to go into Google and do um, free typing games net. And there's typing lessons, there's typing games. The lessons, they're not that fun, to be honest, but they're very functional. I mean, it teaches the home row keys. It teaches, um, you can do timed test typing. So when I have an OT evaluation with an older child, I'll have them go on there so that I can, so I can uh, measure how quickly they're typing, and then I can put it in the evaluation. Someone here is mentioning typingclub.com. I have heard of that one as well. I don't really know a lot of these because, as I said, my school district uses Mavis Beacon, so I'm pretty familiar with that. And someone else is saying typing.com is quite good. Someone else is saying, can I have a copy of that too? Slide 15. Not sure which slide is slide 15. Let's check that out. Okay, yeah, so that is um, in the packet. These lowercase letters, that's one page in the packet of um, developmental expectations. So we'll include that in the resources for you, no problem. Does anyone know? I like how people are adding in here different comments that they have about different programs. Kidstype.com, I never heard of that one, so that's great. So yeah, if anyone has any additional questions, just if you can type them out real quickly, we'll hang around here for a little bit if we don't have any more that we found earlier. But yeah, if you I'll, have any, you can leave them real quick. A lot of the questions that came up, we ended up answering throughout. But this recording will be available. Okay. It will be available in this group, and it will also be available um, on my YouTube and on Heather's YouTube. So you'll definitely be able to have it. And if you have friends that don't have Facebook, then they'll still have it available. Typing Ninja. Ooh, Chaya Gotsman. How are you, Chaya? I like that. I've never heard of um, Typing Ninja. But I, I have used Dance Mat Typing. That's a fun one. But I don't think it's appropriate for high school. It's, it's quite young. It's like a cartoon dinosaur jumping all around. But he's fun. Um, but I think, for me, my high school kids would, would not like that. They, they would be way too cool. <laughs> Type Dojo. Okay, never heard of that one either. Great. All right. So it looks like that is it for the questions, I think. Hopefully we answered most of your questions as we went along. Um, and if you're watching the replay of this, then just leave your questions in the thread on Facebook and we can come back and answer those if we didn't answer it in the video. Um, and then also if you're watching this later on YouTube, feel free to leave comments there and we'll kind of be monitoring those and answering as we can. So we want to thank everyone for coming and we enjoyed doing this and we're glad that you could take an hour out of your busy day. I'm sure all of us have had very stressful situations happening. And so I'm just very thankful that you all took the time to spend an hour with us. And hopefully the information we gave you was helpful and you can use it with your students and kids or sending to parents. Yeah, we know I, I've, I'm hearing so much and I know you are too, Heather. We talked about it, how our our followers are their OTs, their teachers, their parents, and there's just a lot of stress and a lot of you know overwhelm. Yes. And we just want to say, like from everything that we're hearing, you're all doing a great job. And we have to take a step back, and we can only do the best we can. And you know, 
nothing has to be perfect and you're doing a great job and keep it up. You're all doing awesome. And we'll just keep at it until this COVID-19 nonsense is, is gone and we can get back to our, you know, our old selves. Yeah. I think, I think we're going to emerge pretty technologically savvy after this, whether we wanted to be or not. Am I right? <laughs> right. <laughs> Everybody's kind of pushed into it. But um, thank you yes. everyone also for joining us. And we just, we were so happy to be able to just give you some information and, and give back to you a little bit because we do appreciate you following us and all of your support. And um, we just wanted to give something back to you. So we hope very much that you've learned something new. And again, we will be getting those links to you as soon as possible. Have a great day. Hey, thank you, everyone. Night, everybody. Bye-bye.